Hello and welcome to the University of Southampton. My name is Graham Petley and I'm the admissions tutor for the Cardiac Physiology Programme. If you're watching this because you've been invited to a selection interview, then congratulations and I look forward to meeting you in person at the interview itself. On the other hand, if you're friends and family of someone who's been invited to a selection interview, you're also extremely welcome and please drop us a line if you've got any questions. Now, in an ordinary year, we'd invite you all to Southampton to view our facilities, to see the campus and to talk to staff and students. In short, to get an idea of whether Southampton is right for you and you can see yourself studying here. Unfortunately, because of the national picture, that's not possible at the moment. So I've put together a few videos which, which will hopefully at least give you some insight as to what Southampton has to offer and allow you to decide whether this is the right programme for you. Now let's start right at the end because this is what the programme is all about. This is an ECG of a patient that's experiencing a myocardial infarction, a heart attack. A cardiac physiologist would instantly be able to recognise this and also know that they need to get this patient to the cath lab for treatment if they're to be saved. Now, not every day is as dramatic as this, but I can guarantee you that every day as a cardiac physiologist will make a difference to people's lives. It's a very rewarding and interesting area. Now, we will teach you during year one to recognise what is normal. So by the end of year one, you might not know the detail of a particular arrhythmia, but you would be able to recognise when something is not right. And that enables you to uh, seek the advice of someone more experienced. By the end of year two, you will recognise instantly this arrhythmia and will be able to escalate to other members of staff instantly. So our whole course is focused around equipping you with the knowledge and skills to become a cardiac physiologist. Now this particular image was taken in our skills facility and there is a second video you can watch that shows the actual skills facility we use throughout the program and we're very fortunate to have equipment of the types you'll be using on placement and in your future careers in the NHS. So one of the simplest measurements we can perform is a blood pressure. We'll teach you in year one how to measure a blood pressure. We'll also teach you about the underpinning science and this is what separates out your knowledge and skills and the depth you will have about the science uh, from other health professionals that perform blood pressure measurements. We'll also teach you how to perform a 12 lead resting ECG. And again, this is a shot from our uh, skills facility where two of our students are practicing on a patient. Of course, they're not real patients, but we do have real live volunteers for you to practice on. And this means that by the time you get to go on placement, not only are you familiar with the equipment, familiar with placing the electrodes, but you've also developed that confidence. So that when you go into a what can be a quite a daunting clinical um, area, uh, you've got the confidence to actually develop your experience and make the most from your placement. Now sometimes a straightforward resting ECG doesn't actually show the arrhythmia or the, the problem that the patient is experiencing. And one of the tests we've got are, is provocative testing. And what we try to do here is put a mild stress on the heart so we can try and provoke the arrhythmia that the patient is experiencing. Here we can see two of our year two uh, patient, uh, students rather, uh, assisting a patient in performing an exercise test. And in this case, the patient will start off walking slowly and gradually walk faster and faster, and then at more of an incline until hopefully we can provoke the arrhythmia that they're talking about. And this is all done in a safe and supervised environment. Of course, here they're just practicing in our skills facility. In year three, we look at invasive cardiac physiology. And here we can see an image on the right that's taken in our um, cath lab. So this is not a skills facility picture. This is an actual um, cardiac catheter laboratory. Now what you can see here in the foreground is the cardiac physiologists. 
and they're monitoring, or she rather, is monitoring the pressure waves that come from a tiny catheter that's placed within the vessels of the heart. Now teamwork is a very important part of being a cardiac physiologist and you can see here a cardiologist is actually performing the procedure themselves, they're manipulating the catheter. Under the drapes is the patient and then supporting the cardiologist will be a, um, a nurse or some other health professional and we can see in the middle ground there a radiographer who's controlling the x-ray set that performs fluoroscopy and the big uh, machine above the patient there is part of a fluoroscopy system. So multi-professional uh, teams are very much part of the cardiac physiologist's role. On the right we can see an example of a pacemaker. This is getting rather old, they're getting increasingly smaller these days as battery and other technology can be miniaturised more and more. Now devices like this, so pacemakers, are implanted in a cath lab rather like the one you can see here. But once they've been implanted, follow-up is by the cardiac physiologist. The cardiac physiologist will program this both from the outset and at follow-up visits. They'll interrogate the device to see how it's functioning and to see how it needs to be adjusted so that they can optimise its output and ensure you get about a 10-year life, give or take. So we're very much focused on helping you develop, develop the knowledge and skills to perform these procedures. Now, if I'm talking about the role of a cardiac physiologist, I probably also need to say a word about the salary. And there's a pay scale, a common pay scale across the uh, NHS known as Agenda for Change. So it's the same pay scale that nurses, um, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, podiatrists, a number of different professions are paid on. Now within that pay scale um, there are a number of different bands and these go from band 1 at the lowest level of pay up to band 9. And in common with all new, newly qualified staff at uh, BSc level um, you'd be eligible to start on a band 5 post which is currently just short of £25,000. If you're interested in what the current uh, level of pay is, then you can Google Agenda for, pay, uh, for Change. Sorry, let me say that again. You can Google Agenda for Change and you'll find the actual pay scale. Now, as you uh, develop your knowledge and skills, so you get rewarded in terms of pay. So you can um, rise up the pay scale, which currently goes up to a, to to a, a maximum of about £30,600. Now many of our students uh, prefer to apply for a band 6 post which starts at a higher level of salary. So before they reach the top of the band 5 scale, their increased knowledge and skills makes them eligible for a band 6 post. So if you're looking for progression, prospects are quite good and that's something to consider. And the band 6 scale goes up to 38,000 at present. So. Uh, I've told you a little bit about the uh, profession, now let's think a little bit about the course. And I want to start with the terminology. And as you've made it this far, you've presumably already grappled with healthcare science and cardiac physiology. What are these two terms? Well, if we go back a number of years, there were many different professions. Medical physics, clinical photography, genomics, audiology, biomedical science, clinical engineering, neurophysiology, haematology, and what we're here to talk about, cardiac physiology. In fact, there were almost 50 different professions. Now, unlike most of the workforce, they didn't fit nicely into one name. So we've got doctors and nurses that make up a big proportion of the workforce. Uh, we've got midwives, we've got the allied health professions, that would be physios, podiatrists, occupational therapists. And then we've got this 50 different professions. So we were asked collectively to come up with a title that defined what we did and would become how we were known going forward. And this we duly did. And we decided what we had in common was applying science to healthcare. So being the imaginative people we are, we decided to call ourselves healthcare scientists. So just to be clear, all 50 professions, of which there's a few examples here, are collectively known as healthcare scientists. We're here today to talk about one specialism within those 50. We're here to talk about cardiac physiology.
Now, just to make life easier, these professions are divided into the life sciences, physiological and physical sciences. So you can see they nicely align. And cardiac physiology is an example of a physiological science. So this particular course is known as cardiac physiology, but is exactly the same as any accredited healthcare science course in this specialism. So the degree itself is a three year degree and on completion it entitles you to register with the Academy of Healthcare Science and the Registration Council for Clinical Physiologists. So the course is accredited by these bodies and because you'll be entitled to register that means you're then eligible to work in the NHS. And registration is increasingly important. It's already a statutory requirement of being a nurse, a doctor. So for those, you have to re um, register with the NMC and the GMC. For cardiac physiology, the uh, professional body are these two, the Academy of Healthcare Science and the Registration Council for Clinical Physiologists. So you will graduate uh, with el eligibility to join those two professional bodies. So let's have a look at the programme structure. Well, in this structure, the blue bits are when you're based at university, the green bits are when you're on placement in an NHS hospital, and the white bits are where you've got time off, the vacations. Starting with year one at the top, year two in the middle, and year three at the bottom. On the left, we have the start of the academic year in late September, early October, right the way through to the end. Now what you'll notice is all three years begin with a university-based element and this is because we like you to develop your knowledge and, and gain that understanding before you go out and apply the knowledge and skills you've learned in a clinical environment. Now although I say it's university-based, throughout the blue periods you will be going into the skills facility to gain practical experience of the particular uh, measurement skills you need to gain in that year. So it is very much a vocational course. And what you can see is that the amount of green, the amount of placements increases for each year. So it starts off in year one with 10 weeks placement, then 15, then 25 weeks in the final year. So if you add that all up, it comes to 50 weeks over the three years. So almost half of the time on the course is spent in placement. What do we teach you when you're in Southampton on the university-based elements? Well, there's a variety of modules, all uh, designed to provide you with the underpinning knowledge you need so to support your specialist cardiac physiology training. So in year one, you'll learn about cardiovascular, but also respiratory physiology. In year two, you'll learn uh, more in depth about non-invasive cardiac physiology, and then you'll specialize in invasive cardiac physiology in year three. So to support those specialist modules, we'll teach you in year one about the wider body systems. Uh, we'll prepare you for practice, so we'll train you in things like infection prevention, manual handling, basic life support. In year two, we'll teach you some of the underpinning science about how the equipment works, what the principles of operation are. We'll teach you about research. And then in year three, as well as your specialist module, you'll do a research project. You decide which project uh, topic you want to take on and you conduct that whilst on placement. And we also have a module that pre prepares you for your future experience as a cardiac physiologist. Now, in terms of where you'll be taught, about half of the time that you're in Southampton, you'll be based on the Highfield campus. And you can see an image of the Highfield campus top left. And we're very fortunate to have a modern campus um, with lots of amenities. It's a very green campus, a lovely place to work. And we've got lots of study areas, library, and you can just see a new building, the Centenary Building, in the background there. The other half of your time, you'll be at Southampton General Hospital in our skills facility and teaching rooms within the hospital. So do have a look at the other video, which will show you about the skills facility, because that's a very big part uh, of the programme, and you'll be spending quite a lot of time there. Now, although that's two separate uh, campuses, it's only a 20 minute uh, bike ride, or sorry, a 20 minute bus ride, or you can cycle across the common, it's very pleasant, or, or walk if you choose. So there's a very convenient Unilink bus service that joins the two campus. So there's a regular uh, bus service between Highfield campus and the hospital. 
In terms of accommodation, we're very fortunate to have many new accommodation blocks and you can decide uh, things like, do you want an ensuite bathroom or what other, other facilities? Do you want somewhere quiet or less quiet? Those sorts of things are up to you. We're also very fortunate to have secured uh, uh, halls accommodation for years two and three, should you want it. The reason we do that is because big chunks of years two and three, you'll be on placement. So you probably don't want to be paying accommodation in Southampton and also at your placement center, or if you're staying at home, saving some money. So the arrangement we have with halls is you can go into halls in year two and three if you wish to, and just pay for the elements when you're in Southampton. Now, some of our students like to do that, Others like to go into private rented accommodation anyway, and of course it's entirely up to you what you like to choose. Now Southampton's a very vibrant city, and we also have lots of amenities on campus. So um, we have many, many clubs and societies, uh, from all the usual sort of football, net netball, cricket, rugby, all the sort of sports things. Uh, right the way through cake decorating to perhaps some more unusual ones uh, like a Quidditch society uh, where they actually play Quidditch on a Saturday morning on the, on the common. So there's a very, very wide range of clubs and societies, something for your interest I would be almost certain. We've also got lots of uh, coffee bars and, and indeed bars, meeting places for you to meet socially, um, both in the kind of hall areas and on the main campus. We've got a modern gym uh, that's kitted out with um, a swimming pool as well as a sports hall. So we've got, uh, uh, I don't know, six aside football, netball, basketball, those sorts of things. Off campus, we've got all the things you might expect of a modern city. So we've got the West Quay Shopping Centre, also got a very good football team. And we've got beaches close by, and it really is a very, uh, well, a fantastic part of the country to live in and we're only about an hour just over an hour by train to London. Now in terms of job prospects we're very uh, fortunate that uh, just recently heard that all of our students from last year have now got uh, jobs and we're only just over a month uh, since they qualified uh, and most of them had jobs since uh, about Easter. So job prospects are absolutely excellent uh, and if you're interested in uh, seeing what sort of jobs are available then do have a look on NHS jobs. Um, in looking there do bear in mind that most of the jobs are timed to uh, arise with when the students become available so they start advertising I suppose from about sort of February March onwards to about September when our students graduate. So that was a very brief overview of the Cardiac Physiology Programme. If you do have any questions, then please drop me a line by email or other means. And if you're coming for a selection interview, I very much look forward to meeting you on the interview day itself. So thank you for, for watching. <laughs>